The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and he said, go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then. They opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel story is uh, just as much about King Herod as it is about the three wise men. Um, Herod was not a good or a kind man by any account, either religiously or politically. Historical facts seem to point that out. And he sees Jesus very much as a threat to himself. The newborn king of the Jews is how the um, wise men address him or call Jesus. And he's a threat in Herod's mind to his power and to his kingship. And so Herod's plans, of course, are to kill Jesus right after this gospel story in Matthew. Um, Herod orders the murder of all the uh, boys, two years and younger in that area. And yet in one way, on one level, Herod does not go with the three wise men right away to see Jesus. In some sense, the three wise men invite Herod to come along. Herod does not know what's going on until the three wise men um, tell him of the birth of Jesus, of the star and what it all means. And in some sense, the three wise men, at least informally, um, invite him to come along. Um, He's invited to go along and see Jesus, who he is. But Herod stays at home instead of accepting the invitation to meet Jesus. Maybe his thinking is, the wise men will tell me all about this when they get back. They'll tell me later what's happened. Or I don't need to go for myself, someone else can go. Or I know what's there. I've seen things like this before. I've had these experiences before in my life. I don't need to accept that invitation to go and see Jesus. I can hear about it or live through it vicariously in some other way. Herod stays at home. The three wise men return home by a different route without ever telling King Herod about the experience, who doesn't even get a second-hand account of what it was like to encounter Jesus, what it's like to encounter God and the Holy Family. It's not to say that King Herod's heart would have been changed or touched had he gone along with the three wise men. It's not to say that his plans would have changed in any way. But because he didn't go, there wasn't even the chance of his heart being changed. (coughs) Maybe one application for the gospel for you and me is that God gives us many opportunities throughout life to meet him and to change our relationship with him and even with other people And if you don't go, then you can't be changed. Do you go when Christ invites you, when you're invited in some sense, given an opportunity, or are you like King Herod and you stay at home? 
Sometimes there are excuses we make, things like, well, it's not what I normally do, it's out of my routine, I'm uncomfortable doing that, I don't go there, I don't have these kinds of conversations. Or maybe the excuse is, I'll hear about it from someone else. Why don't you go and you tell me all about it, you have that conversation, tell me what happened. But that's not good enough because our hearts aren't usually touched by second-hand experiences. Or maybe the thinking is simply, I'll do it later. Right? I'll have many other opportunities, I'll have other chances to meet God, to deepen relationships with people and with the Lord. I have many opportunities in life, no doubt. And yet, and sometimes, we don't. Herod did not have another opportunity like this one to meet Jesus. And in fact, the Holy Family flees to Egypt until Herod dies. He has no more opportunity to meet Jesus. He had that one, and he missed it. Maybe um, some ways that um, the Lord gives us opportunities, some key opportunities and moments in our life. One, I think, is when it comes to religious experiences, whether it's mass or going on retreats or um, taking advantage of the sacraments, you participating in the sacraments or preparing yourself to receive sacraments, because sometimes that gets put off until another time when you have more hours, when you're not in school anymore, or when you're not working as much, or after marriage, or after the kids are out of the house, you put those things off. Maybe it's um, going to the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of reconciliation, kind of put that off. It's uh, something that we want to do, but it, uh, months and years sometimes go by before it happens. Or maybe it's seeking some kind of spiritual direction or counseling, coming to talk about some issues or some, um, some things going on in your life. And we have the idea and you say, I'll do it sometime. The opportunity is there because the temptation is there, but maybe it's one of the things you put off. And it can be a moment where, where the Lord touches your heart in some way. Whether profound change comes or not from that, it's uh, the idea of taking advantage of the opportunity. Maybe um, it's the example of visiting family. You know, maybe sometimes you let other people go and visit the family, but not you, thinking there's always time. I'll go visit the children later when I'm less busy. When I retire, I'll see more of my family members. I'll be more involved in the grandchildren's life, whatever it might be. Again, sometimes those opportunities don't come again. And even if they do, the ages of people have changed. And the uniqueness about that, that moment, that opportunity is gone. And it can be um, gotten back. Maybe it's um, opportunities to study. I'm thinking, okay, I'll put off schooling to another time. I can do this later on in my life. Putting off um, um, being a student and kind of finishing a career and getting a, a path, um, some kind of job in your life. Maybe it's opportunities to learn more about the Catholic faith. Um, because again, it was one of those things like King Herod where sometimes our knowledge of the Catholic faith comes from what we hear from other people or read online or hear in the media. And so, and that's hardly ever accurate of what the Catholic Church truly teaches or truly says, or what the Pope really said. Maybe it's the opportunity to read Pope Francis's new letter, right? The Joy of the Gospel, which is very accessible, meaning it's an easy read, maybe the most, the easiest read from a Pope in a hundred years, I would say at least. Um, they're all, they've all been kind of convoluted and difficult from uh, about 120 years ago until Pope Francis. Great um, ideas, very practical things in life, and things that will have you, you know, proud to be Catholic and nodding along saying, yeah, we, I need to change and my church needs to change in some ways as well. Maybe it's you taking the opportunity of learning more about your Catholic faith, especially on difficult topics or the things that you find hard to accept. Church teaching on marriage. Pope Francis has asked for that whole survey on marriage. And there's an idea about um, what the beauty of what our church teaches about marriage and what it should be like. Maybe it's church teachings on life issues, on social justice, on homosexuality, on some of the more difficult um, topics in the Catholic faith. But to learn the, what the church truly says and maybe also to understand the beauty of what the church teaches on these ideas. The beauty and, and the sensibility of it all. Again, sometimes we try to just get that second hand like King Herod tried to get knowledge of Jesus secondhand. Maybe one of the main areas, though, to not be like King Herod, to, take, to seize opportunities, is in conversations with people. Maybe connecting with some good conversations and some of the people most important in your life, 
with family members, with a spouse, with children, with parents, with your siblings, with good friends. Sometimes, especially in family life, maybe especially with children, sometimes they present themselves or give you an opportunity or an opening for a good conversation. And sometimes you don't take advantage of that. It could be simply because you're, you're tired or you, maybe you miss it a little bit or it's, you're not in the right mood for it, but sometimes they are. Or sometimes a spouse gives you an opening for a deeper conversation, a better conversation. Or siblings or friends or whatever it might be. And it, it's uh, important maybe to take advantage of those kinds of opportunities. They don't always present themselves again. And it's a moment that can touch the hearts of each one of you, can deepen some relationships, forge different bonds, and it kind of um, matures and moves the relationship along. Because as we all grow and change, so do our relationships. But sometimes our conversations aren't deep and they don't um, help move that relationship along. So it's kind of stuck where it was years ago. And those opportunities don't always present themselves. They're not always there. Um, maybe you can think of some in the past couple months or so, given the, the holidays that just passed. But I think it's important in many ways to take advantage of those moments and those kinds of opportunities. So looking at religious experiences, visits with family, opportunities to study, opportunities to learn more about the Catholic faith, and opportunities for better conversations and deepening of relationships in life. Some of our opportunities don't come around over and over again. And you don't want to be like King Herod, where you stay at home and you expect other people to tell you what it's all about, what God is all about, what religion and spirituality is all about, and what being a part of a family is all about. You want to experience that for yourself firsthand as well. It's important that you, um, that you be there, not be like King Herod. It's still the beginning of the new year, a good time to make resolutions, maybe just one for this year, so that you might be able to see opportunities in your life, but not just see those opportunities, but to seize them at, as well, so that you're not like King Herod. You don't just um, live vicariously through others. You see the moment, you accept the invitation to meet God and to meet others.